Welcome to Sea Time, everybody, the off-road show that brings you all the results, news, and online shenanigans that make being online a good time. We'd like to say thank you to Fly Racing for their support of Sea Time. Please go check them out at flyracing.com. Welcome to Seat Time, everybody. Brian Pierce here, your host for this fine evening. Episode 181. Now, of course, Papa Pierce here, luckily enough, just got in from Colorado, so we're going to have all kinds of good stuff to talk with him about the KTM Adventure Rally, and we're going to be able to talk to Scotty Broman about the Baja Rally that's coming up. We did that last year, Coco's Corner. So there's going to be a lot of information that Papa Pierce can bring of, of his experience driving that crazy-ass RV around the Baja Peninsula last year as we get into a little bit later in the show. But because of the fact that we know Ryan Sipes is a family man, just got back in town from being overseas, he's nice enough to come on the show, but we don't want to keep him too long. So without much further ado, Mr. Ryan Sipes, how is your evening going, kind sir? It is going good. We uh, cleaned up everything from the GNCC today and uh, starting to build back up now, getting the bike built and... Uh, Got the practice bike ready. Uh, go, go pound some laps tomorrow. Oh, buddy! So, ISDE overall winner. Come home, GNCC onto the podium, third place. A, a Husqvarna sweep, by the way, which is insane and awesome for for the brand. And then, of course, you've got the National Enduro this weekend. Are you still going to be going to that, or do you need a break? No, I, well, I, I I could say yes to both of those. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, definitely planning on going. It, unless something comes up, I'll be there and I'll be racing. And uh, just because this one's close to home, and they say this one's a good one for for a guy like me that's not, you know, doesn't like too much of the tight stuff. So I go there and uh, I, I can rest when I'm dead. It'll, it'll work out. Right, man. I really hope they're not lying to you. I have no idea. I just remember reading in the preview that they said there's a lot of new fresh cut trail. Oh, there's more this year. In the in the National Enduro preview, so I, I don't know if that means fresh cut, thirty inch wide trail or fresh cut, GNCC trail. I don't know. Yeah, more like thirty six inch wide. Right, it could get interesting for say the least. So, why tight, you're tight here? Your bark buster. You are not just a badass that is fun to talk to with a wicked cool accent from Kentucky. More importantly, you just overall the internet the ninetieth International Six Day Enduro in Kols Kols uh, Kolshitsa. Slovakia, I think that's how they pronounce it, Slovakian yeah. guys. Um, but that it, right. it is, that's insane, dude. Um, I know you've probably been home for a little bit. You've had a chance for this to soak in. You've probably talked to a lot of people about it. So you've got either the truth, um, which is the long version, and then the shorter version of, of what, you know, how does it feel? So, I mean, you could, we're going to Disneyland, we're having an amazing time, or what's the what's the spiel? How does it feel? Uh, it's awesome. Uh there's a lot of history there and a lot of people have went over, uh, you know, from here and uh, to be the first is an honor, you know, to been able to pull it off. Uh, really didn't have much time to, you know, celebrate cause we erased the very next weekend. So I came home and got back to work and, you know, got my head back on straight and, and, uh, had a decent race up at, uh, Unadilla, but, um, but yeah, I mean, as far as the ISDE goes, I didn't expect to win it, you know, and, uh, I expected to be close to the front, but never expected to win it by, whatever 45 seconds um and it was a, a super fun week of race and super stressful um just you know first of all building the lead and then hanging on to it was even more stressful uh you know and not making a big mistake or whatever but had a good time racing the you know milner got second but me and him are buddies we you know cut up all week and um and then taylor robert riding with him every day and uh, it was just a a super good time all the really thankful for all the work that team usa you know all the helpers put in and everything and everything ama does is um pretty neat and uh i wish we could have got the the trophy you know the trophy team when um it just just wasn't in the cards for us this year but i know we got what it takes we can do it it's just uh get a little luck on our side and we'll be able to pull it off yeah and, and what's crazy is well, you know Two, two weeks ago, Jason Hooper was on when you guys were over there, when we were chatting with him, and it's like we felt like we kind of almost jinxed everybody. Like we were just talking about how great everybody was doing and yeah. Caleb Russell, and it was amazing. We, and we saw you up there, but at that point, you know, we didn't know, you know what was going on, and you guys were just about getting ready to wake up to start your third day, and that's kind of seems where things started to, to pinball for USA in a, in a negative stance. But for you, they just consistently grew in that sense where you know Milner was kind of trying to chip away but you never lost that overall again like 
you may not have won the overall on the day, but in the long run, time wise, that's all you got to do is keep up the overall right. time. So holy shit! Yeah, so you said yep. something that piqued some interest uh, with the the pressure that comes along with that day to day of of kind of waking up and going, holy crap! I can't lose this lead. I need to keep this lead. With the mental stress that that comes with, did it re- did it relate at all to motocross? Like in that sense, or do you feel like you mentally had to dig deep from something else that you've like you know trained for or learned throughout life? No, to be honest, it was a totally new thing. I've never been in a championship battle um, coming down to the last you know say two rounds at a at a in moto. You know, I've the the closest I ever got was the third place overall. You know, on one of the Supercross deals, and right. but by the last three races, I was out of it. I was still in it for third, but I was out of the win. And uh, so that's what I felt like. I felt like, man, this is like. You know, you got the points lead after round ten, and you got two more rounds left. So you got four more motos or whatever, and you've got to be smart and hang on to it. But you still got to you still got to go fast because yep. you you know you can't get smoked. And uh, now it was um, it was it took a ton of focus and it took a ton of talking to myself. To be honest, you know, you get out there and you could you I could have easily um, you know I don't mean I don't know you know you guys know how it's set up, but. You know, you go do a test, and then you might have 40 miles of transfer before right. your next test. So you can easily carry what you did in the test prior all the way with you. And you can either beat yourself up about it, or you can reset and say, you know, I'm going to do better next time. Or, you know, or say you won the last test, you can easily get, you know, complacent and say, well, this is, you know, I don't even have to focus. This is easy. But uh, I was... I was proud of myself for that part. Just my my mental game was was on point. I had to I had to talk myself into it, uh, you know, a hundred times over. Because you get out there and then after I won the first two tests of the first day, and a, you know, a little voice said, "Well, maybe I can win them all," you know. And then it was like, "Hold up, just just chill out." <laughs> oh, that's you know, let's let's like temper the expectations a little bit. And uh, but yeah, it was it was a awesome experience. Um, just. You know how it all turned out. I kept, you know, you always wonder or you're always afraid that you know it's going so well, something's got to happen, you know. And uh, and but I did everything I possibly could. I took all chance out of it, um, you know, or all at least you know it wasn't going to be my fault. I think um, if I lost the thing, and we were able to get it done, and a bunch of people helped me out, um, and forever thankful for that. But uh, it was a just a super cool experience. I, I felt like it was a championship. Really? Oh, I, 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 yeah. I think it's one of. We were talking with a couple different riders that had done the ISDE club team riders last week, um, and it's they were saying about how it's one of those situations where even as a club team rider, they could go over there and be the fastest club team rider, and if they went home, that it's unfortunate for them that it probably wouldn't help them any, and that's that's kind that kind of sucks. But it's like I think in your case, like the whole world. Yeah. knows what you did like a, the club riders unfortunately don't get it's kind of like maybe a light rider in that case like they kind of maybe don't get as much recognition as the 450 class in this case obviously you know the uh the e2 and then obviously the overall like a damn impressive but i interrupted you before so i didn't lose my train of thought you were looking like you had some thoughts for Mr. well I was, Sipes. I was gonna ask uh, a lot of times they question who the ama sends over you know do we send woods rides over do we send uh, GNC route? Do we send motocross route? Do we send desert route? But it seems like you've got a good cross section of talent in all of those areas, and you've demonstrated that. Did that help you do as well as you did this year because you're such an overall rider as opposed to focusing in, in just one area? Oh, less speci- specificity. Less like specificity. It. Yeah, no, for sure. I think it, it ended up. Um, those tests over there, they were a lot like when I did it in 2013. You know, there's a little bit of woods. There's a lot of grass track. It gets super rough. Um, there's technical spots. There's, you know, other spots that are not technical, and you just got to, you know, just pin it. Um, but I think that was what was the best thing for me is, like, I came from moto, so I have the right. intensity. Um, and I, I don't have a problem with, you know, high speeds and, you know, getting a little sketchy going around a high-speed sweeper. Um Whereas if I were a woods rider, maybe, you know, maybe that I wouldn't have been as well there. 
And then we get into the woods and some of the more technical stuff, and it's just roots and rocks and all that. And uh, two years ago, I wouldn't have been able to handle it like I did this year. But with all the GNCCs I've been doing and the Enduros and all the practice I do at home, it's it's like my, you know, the combo of the skill sets, you know, the moto. And then now, you know, I've got more of the technical side of it from GNCC. It was just, it was like a perfect combo, you know, as far as uh, I never rode over my head. I just rode my best and it was, it was good enough. You know, it was, it was better than the rest of the guys. So it was like, uh, it was just, you know, like the, the both skill sets, you know, kind of came together to be a perfect combo for me. And that, that's a conversation we had a couple of weeks ago uh, about, you know, how it's hard in this country to be good at all things. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, if you're a great GNCC rider, it's hard to be a great motocross rider. But if you look to Europe, they don't have the same kind of thing we have. And they're looking for generalist type riders like yourself that is very, very good at everything. And that AMA, you're listening. Um, <laughs> you know, that might help you select riders to be successful uh, in the uh, six days in the future. It's not a one skill set kind of rider. It's a good rider in many areas yeah. is the one that's going to win. Plus tough as nails like you. Yeah. I think I think that was why he got, and I don't really know within 2013 when you were uh, on on the Wellard Club team, but, you know, did you reach out to anybody uh, to try to like go do that in that club team or did you get that offer within your first year of doing the off-road stuff? Uh, yeah, that was before I even did any off-road stuff. That was the end of 2013. I'd just come off a full season of Supercross and Motocross and uh, Auntie uh, Callan, the the team manager for yeah. you know USA, he called me up and, and he got – the reason he even had the idea was Taylor Robert. I go way back with him. I've been buzzing with him forever. And uh, he told Auntie, he said, hey, this guy can ride some off-road because I used to go to Arizona and ride all of Taylor's off-road stuff okay. with him. And, uh, you know, and so he told Auntie, hey, this guy can do it, you know, and uh, I got on the club team and that was fun and it was cool. Like, I'm glad I got that experience. I think it definitely helped me this year. Um, but the, um, yeah, no, I didn't reach out to them. I didn't even, didn't even, you know, really know all about it. You know, they just kind of yeah. called me and um, really, like I said, it helped me out a lot to have that experience this year. Yeah. And I think that that might be a little bit of what you're saying. Is that that could have been that that kind of that scouting mission to kind of say, oh, you know, Ryan Sipes is a great all around rider. Absolutely. Obviously, typically a top ten in motocross could even be a top five, you know, when everything goes right for him. And so they're like, well, maybe he's looking for that, you know, people here that he may not be doing motocross anymore. Taylor Roberts is saying he's good at off road. It's just like put the seed out there seed and out. go husky. Come on, yeah, like kick go ass, uh, right, uh, Husqvarna. Husqvarna, yeah. Husqvarna, without a U after the Q. So um, we did have a question from the chat room. Is uh, uh, Duff four two two wants to know if if Sipes is planning on attending any local hair scrambles this winter or fall? Um, yeah, I think so. Might do some of the the mid south winter series uh, one or two. I don't like to go all winter without racing. So and those are pretty fun. They're normally you know um, a good time, some good competition. So I'll probably do a couple of those. I don't know how much else I'll do because. Um, if it's not, you know, a race I'm contracted to do, it, I get some grief for it, you know, for going and racing, but, uh, yeah, no, which is understandable. I'm gone all year, so it's completely understandable, but yeah, I'll do a few. Cool. Well, that's awesome. So I know we, we, we said to try to keep it a little short. So last bit is your thoughts on, obviously we know your thoughts kind of on how it went for you, but so your thoughts on team USA, uh, the way that the team is running like that well-oiled machine that it seems to be kind of like, and then already how you guys, if you've done it, talked about what looks what it looks like for next year. And then maybe, has there been any discussions on how we try to keep, you know, mechanicals from being an issue? I know it can be, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's something stupid, sometimes it's stuff you can, sometimes it's stuff you can't worry about and you can't prepare for. But has there been any of that and then kind of just, you know, your overall thoughts on the team experience? Yeah, no, I think, um, like I said before, everybody's is focused on the same thing. Everybody's fired up. Like, we, we know we can win, and we want to win, and everybody's, like, they're doing everything they can to do that. Like, it's not like we're going over, you know, kind of lackadaisical, just, you know, not really worried about it. Like, 
we're focused on it. And uh, I think, you know, everybody from support crew from Auntie on down uh, to the riders is everybody's on the same page and we want to win. And we know that we're putting, you know, everybody's putting all they got into it. Um, the mechanical thing, like, it sucks. It's like, it was like, uh, you know, his bike was built the same as mine mm -hmm. and, and his bike breaks and mine doesn't. You know, and it's like just one of those things. It's a machine. You know, it's it's going to break, I think, at times. Um, and it wasn't, I don't, like I said, it, there, his bike was the same as mine, same as Taylor's, you know, being all 350s. And uh, our bikes were good and his weren't, and his wasn't. So it was like just one of them things that just happens. And uh, I don't know what you do to, to make it better. You know, it just, you just hope it, you know, you do your best building the bike and then, you hope it doesn't break. Um, but yeah, that, and then Caleb getting hurt, like Caleb's never even had a major injury before now. So, you know, and it had to happen on the week of the ISDE. It's just a, like a bum deal, you know, it's, um, not really anything. It's, he didn't do it on purpose. He didn't get hurt on purpose. You know, it's just something that happens and it's motocross injuries are going to happen or it's, it's motorcycle riding injuries are going to happen. So hopefully next year, we can get all our ducks in a row and uh, and go over there and take it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, cool. Well, uh, you go have fun with the family. Make sure all the kids are doing safe and, uh, and you know, now that you're back in the country and uh, getting to be around the family for a little bit. Good luck at the National Enduro this weekend. And, uh, you know, Indeed. try to help Caleb uh, get that or try to try to keep Caleb from winning it this weekend. You know, go out there <laughs> and get the win and make him fight for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, always have a good time, and I uh, appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk soon. Absolutely, man. Thank you good very luck. much. Keep it pinned. Right. Keep it pinned. We'll go with that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Later, dude. All right. <laughs> WFO? Yeah, with WFO. Um, so uh, it, it, it's been a little bit since you've been able to be on the show, and I'm glad that you're back. Glad you're back safely from, from Colorado. I can only imagine sort of. that you're probably tired of sitting down. Um, so uh, you bought, You've been watching me ride? I have been. I have been. So Sitting down? We, uh, we didn't get a chance to really say thank you very much to our sponsors because we wanted to make sure we had Sipe on and we could get him um, you know, taken care of really quick. So, obviously, Fly Racing. So, flyracing.com. It's still kind of the summer. It's starting to get a little bit cooler, so you might need some of that kinetic mesh gear. You might not. We were saying the, Ev the Evo 2.0s now have that, for 2016, have that new BOA uh, uh, tightening system so that micro adjustment on those things is insane so if nothing else go check those out if you're looking for some new gear obviously flyracing.com or go to your local dealer either way is a good way to support uh, the people that support seat time of course kinda tire usa so at kindatire.com go check out all the waiters that they have to offer or better yet again local dealer and within your local dealer if they don't happen to carry kinda you can always ask them to do so say hey i want to try out the equilibrium tire would you have to be able to get one of those in or some of the other sticky rubbers that they do offer in those dual compounds, which is super wicked, especially if you're in a place with either A, a lot of rocks, or B, like if they just happen to be like literally slick rocks, like they are at the TKO. Like they're just wet. They just sweat. I wish I'd have so had, I wish I'd had Parker's in Colorado. Yeah? Oh, on that, uh, that 690? On that 690. Mm, that, those, we're going to talk about that 690. Instead of those PS tires. That, uh, the off-the-floor tires? Yeah. <laughs> and then of course uh still well still well performance is still performance.com if you're looking for any kind of suspension for your motorcycle be it off-road mx supercross you just give those guys a check out there on their website you can shoot them some emails ask them some questions that's the best way to kind of get the dynamic going because regardless when you do send your suspension off you're going to spend time talking with alan there anyway to kind of get your rider interview out of the way because they do ask a lot of questions to make sure that they're giving you a very customized um, you know, set up within your suspension. So stillwellperformance.com. Definitely thank all those guys for their support. I wanted to go ahead and say thank you very much to everybody that went and did some commenting on either A, videos, or B, on uh, iTunes. So we've got a couple that I wanted to talk about here. First up is going to be the comment winner from YouTube. So Mike Morales. His, his comment is, You are one of the coolest guys in the whole world. Don't ever change! Exclamation point. And your dad is awesome too! Exclamation point. 
So you can change that opinion. Yeah, I get that, and I'm like, man, this guy, he's either just blowing air up my skirt, or he's just he's he's rolling. He's like on a bunch of Molly or something right now, just having a good time watching some YouTube videos. Obviously, we appreciate the comment. If uh, if if you're if you're pulling our leg and having fun, I laughed. Don't worry. And if you're being serious, I laughed, but it's still awesome. So we really really appreciate it. And so if you're blowing up his kilt, he'll enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, hey, hey, you just don't turn away. That's all I ask. Um, look me in the eyes. Uh, so. Mike, reach out to us through Facebook or comment or reach out through the website. And if you get out to us, I'd love to make sure that you get some seat time koozies for uh, for winning the YouTube comment. Of course, we do get a new iTunes comment. So I wanted to uh, give a shout out there. So GTT533. I don't know if that means anything, but good job on picking a bunch of letters and random numbers. Gave us five stars. The show is super fun and upbeat. I love the technical discussions about off-road. Papa Pierce is awesome, and it's fun to hear him talk about his experiences. Keep it up, and don't listen to the last review from Gerky123. He's a douchebag. I don't know if I'd go so far as to say he's a douchebag. He has an opinion. Everybody's allowed to have their opinion. He gave us a three-star. You know, you know it's, it's like that little sphincter you have on your backside. Mm -hmm. if everybody has one, because if we didn't, you know what we'd be full of. Shit. So opinions yeah. are like that little muscle in your backside. <laughs> Everybody has to be one and have one. <laughs> the thing that you finger on a prostate exam? Yeah, or you'd be full of it. Yep. Oh, I got to get that checked out. So here, so definitely really appreciate the, the review there on iTunes for checking us out and dropping that review. Again, reach out to us through one of the social channels, and we would love to get your information and be able to send you a couple seat time koozies. So definitely that's the way to do it, man. If you guys drop some comments in YouTube or iTunes, we're definitely going to pick some winners. And we're going to see sending those kind of koozies out to you guys. So that's a way to, to help us out because the comments do mean something to all of these aggregators of content. And then, of course, it's fun because we get to talk about it on the show. Uh, oh, we're talking about people in the chat room. are like, I saw my name. And I was like, what? I didn't say nothing. And it was about something else. So it kind of threw me off. We'll go with it, though. Um, the chat room is kind of going. We're at tlk.io slash seat time if you haven't been in there yet. And then, of course, don't forget Selfie. Uh, we do have the long TKO raw footage up there, um, so you can check that out. It's There's a link on the site. So if you go to seattime.co in the sidebar, there's a link for Selfie, Selfie, and that will take you there. If you share the link from Selfie to like Facebook or Twitter or anything like that, it gives you a discount. So if you haven't bought it yet and you're like, oh, I'd love to support Seatime or I'd love to watch 15 minutes of raw TKO footage, that's a way to save yourself some, some dough. And uh, do it, and it's two dollars. So if you need to save yourself, you know, forty cents off of two dollars, that's the way to do it. So have fun with it. Um, so, whew, KT, K KTM Adventure Rally greatness. That's my second one. Overall, was it awesome? Beyond awesome. Yeah. And uh, got to give Fly a shout out. Uh, there's a whole bunch of scratches <laughs> on the left side of my Fly adventure helmet uh from your head or from from, from my head from mom's head yeah four times i went down every time my left side of my helmet went smackaroo into the rocks what about the other parts of your body oh they were fine they were fine but uh long story short this is all this is the first time i find out about it so not only am i a concerned viewer but i'm also a concerned son so i'm well, kind of like oh well how else is the rest of you <laughs> i went down four times in in three days uh of course once your mother was on the back and she uh, did a flying W off the... Of course, if you add up how fast I was going all four times when I fell over, the sum of all four speeds is zero. Every single time, it was a matter of not going forward. Something happened to the bike, I had to put the left leg down, and it just doesn't. The left leg... Oh, because of the fact that because, your left yeah. leg is just... It, Every yeah. time, you know, I would have... Made a mistake to the right. The right leg had no problem. But there were four times that I went down. Your poor mother was with, with me on one of them. Um, and it just couldn't hold me. And psh, down I went. And there was one hill. Oh, my gosh. And Stephen, our producer, uh, was he rode that hill with us <laughs> two months ago when it was wet. I got news for you. Wet ain't nothing in Colorado. It is terrible when it's dry. Uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have uh, Scotty on in a few minutes. You know, remember the dust in Mama Rosario's? Yes. Well, we couldn't even walk in and out of the van. Yes. Because it was so slippery. Well, when that whenever you see that that uh, uh, the little quartz crystals and the pink granite dust on a hill, be very afraid. If it's dry, 
because it is worse than ice. It's just like Mama Rosario's dust. And there was one hill I embarrassed the heck out of myself. I fell twice on one hill. One guy slid out. Another guy slid out behind him. I slid out behind him. And guess which side? The left. So pop, down I go. And then, uh, so they go, they go. And it's my turn to go. And I decide I'm going to kind of bulldog it down a little bit. So um, you're trying to make it back up at this point? No, we're going down. Okay. We're going very down. Okay. Oh, I killed the uphills. I got a whole bunch. Yeah, that, that 690 on uphills was awesome you know that and we even had a joke a couple of the guys behind me were going man look at him he's not standing up you gotta stand up to make that hill and i turned around and said well better pray for me guys i can't stand up yeah and i that old 690 and i we just rolled out in second gear and roosted all the way up the hill i hit a rock at the top popped the wheelie over the top and got a bunch of comp so that 690 is great did you like Flip your hand but, up and like flick them off. No, like I didn't know. If I'd like... have taken my hand off the bars, I would have. <laughs> but on the no downhill showboating. side, th then what I do, I forget to turn off the ABS. And so I'm sliding down the hill, sliding down the hill. And of course, come to an almost, you know, come to a stop as I'm, I'm sliding sideways. So there's no, you know, the odometer would still say zero. Right. But I'm doing a hockey slide down the hill because of the ABS trying to scrub off speed. And, of course, fell over on the left-hand side. Then I get up. I get, wait, I'm going to do this smart. There was a rut right down the middle of the trail. I mean, just, you know, your typical six-inch rut, six-inch deep rut, almost to your, well, eight-inch deep, almost to your foot pegs. So I said, I'm going to try something. I got long legs. So I put the bike in the rut. I put my left leg on that side, my right leg on that side, and I walked down the hill <laughs> with the motorcycle between my legs until I, because I was tired of falling down. Yeah. And that stuff was slick as goose grease. So I get to a place that's flat, all is well, fire it up, off I go. Had a great ride. There was just that one hill in three days of riding. Had my number. I was, you know, the guys behind me, if they didn't get a good laugh out of it. You they know, weren't watching hard whop, And then whop, and then walk down the hill with the bike. But that actually worked out pretty good. There you go. To have the That's bike the in the rut, and then of course there's a big rock in the rut, so I had to start the engine and pop a wheelie over it and kill the engine and then walk the rest <laughs> of the way. But do you think uh, knobbier tires would have helped some in that kind of stuff? Oh, very much so, very yeah. much so. Um, you know, the the Pirelli Scorpions were okay. They were um, especially on the road. They were fine on the road, right. but the bike is so quiet. When I was sometimes going down the highway, and and I'd pull in the clutch, the only thing I could hear was the tires. So I'd, I'd have to blip the throttle a little bit every once in a while just to make sure the engine was still running. Right. Uh, very quiet, very torquey. That would, very, but it's an interesting bike, the 690. Again, the reason I got it was my 990 is all over the garage floor. In pieces. Oh, yeah. Change the oil, take it apart. You know, change the air filter, take it apart. You know, just that's what you do with a 990. But I can't pick it up anymore in the dirt, you know, because I can only use my right, my right leg. Yeah. And 500 pounds, that's just, I can't do it. But the the 690 was no problem. Four times I had to pick it up. And four times I was able to do it. I was helping other guys pick up their 990s, but I was able to but do the 690 were, by myself. But that's because you were taking 25 or 30% of the weight, not 100% right, of right, the weight. Right. Yeah, so. You know, I'd stop and I'd help them pick up their bike. And uh, in one case, I stopped to help, pick up, help the guy pick up his bike. And that was my first fall. I got on my bike, started the engine, the, the bike slid down and cross-rutted, and of course on the left side. And that was the first set of scratches on my yep. helmet. Uh, but it's an interesting bike. Um, the gas tank's in the back. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and so the weight might be weird. It's, but it's actually very low. Because they probably still... It's a 350-pound motorcycle, but it doesn't feel like a 350-pound motorcycle. But I got to give KTM kudos on one thing. It has a great kickstand. <laughs> it's first probably KTM the with a good first KTM in history with a good course. It's ready to race, not ready to park. You know, that's the, you know, that's their stuff. But for old farts on old bikes or whatever, um, had a great kickstand. I, I mean, I can't use it. You know, I never put the bike on the kickstand and put my weight on the bike. That's anybody who does that, that that's just asking for trouble. But it could, it held up the bike. It did well, but it's got some really quirky things that I, I've got to think through and work through. I've already got the tall saddle from Seat Concepts. They mm -hmm. were there. The vendor presentation at 
at Colorado was excellent. You know, there were all kinds of people there. I got the uh, lowered foot pegs from uh, Black Dog. Okay. I used the bar risers um, from TourTech off of my 990. So I'd, I'd done that before I left. I was able to get the tall saddle, able to get the lowered foot pegs while I was there, which was good. Um, but there's some things about the bike that are really strange. Um, if you look at one, but by the way, 10 or 15% of the bikes that were there were 690s, maybe even 20%. Nice. Uh, so there you were a you lot of them You weren't there. the weirdo on the 690. And they haven't changed them in years. Like mine's a, mine was a brand un, brand new one sold 2014. And I go to the tent and I look at the ones that they're doing for demo rides and it didn't even change the graphics for 2015. They so, sell just enough of them. To no, they sell everyone going. they bring over. There's, yeah. And sometimes there's Let's a waiting for it, list Steve. for them. But, uh, you know, it's an interesting situation. I got to work out how to get this bike. It, you know, it's kind of strange. It, it doesn't know what it is. Okay. Is it a big dirt bike? It's certainly not a small adventure bike. Right. Because of the gas tank in the back, you got no place to put stuff on the back fender. And oh, we will. Giant eventually. loop. We're going to get giant loop stuff for it. We're going to keep talking about the 690 and what's weird about it for the old man but here. But more importantly. But right now we're going to have uh, Mr. Scotty Broman from Baja Rally. So for those of you who don't remember, you should, that we got a chance to go compete at the Baja Rally last year. We'll do a little bit of uh, you know rehashing old times as we get through a little bit later into this. But one of the cool things is that Scotty's got the 3.0 Baja Rally starting up next week. So we wanted to talk to him. We're excited that it's happening. It's We're unexcited that we're not going to be able to be there. But in that, we're just going to relive it through everybody else. So, dude, Scotty, what's going on, man? How you been? Well, I'm just hanging in by a thread, actually, Brian. Yeah? Um, actually, no, I'm doing great. We, uh, <clears throat> I'm actually uh, stoked to check you out here tonight, see you and Steve-O, and uh, just kind of check out um, also Ryan and Stoke. So uh, under the circumstances, I'm doing phenomenal. Awesome, man. Well, okay, you guys have less than a week, and you're going to have riders showing up down there right outside the San Nicolas Hotel in Ensenada. People ready to go race their dirt bikes are ready to take part in the Baja Rally 3.0. And you've got riders from all over parts of the world, or you, in, in specifically Europe. I know you guys did a lot to help those riders get over here. So kind of talk us through how the event has grown and maybe even why it's grown in the direction that it has. I don't know if that's on purpose or just the way that the event itself has unfolded. So kind of like what's new and what's happening in, in rally for Baja these days. Well, great question that, that the how and the why the how is, I would say it's uh, it's really just organic and it's kind of naturally slow growth. It's not uh, hyped up with a lot of money or a lot of, um, you know, a lot of backing and push. So it's the how is just basically natural and organic, uh, steady. And so not too fast of growth. And then the why is, um, and on the how it's like, it's all about relationships. It's all about, um, Mexican, uh, people on the team making relationships and me spending time, uh, making, uh, lasting relationships with well over 100 people. The why is really interesting because we ask, and I'm interested in knowing, because I have to ask myself why. And sometimes <laughs> I, you know, like especially with Challenge, last year it was very challenging, and especially before, during, and right after the rally, it was a very tough one for us. But um, the why, it comes to, I look back, we wanted to solve a problem, Brian. Yeah. And so if you, the problem was the bikes were not uh, getting the treatment, uh, either the publicity or the spotlight or the uh, VIP treatment, if you will, from the organizers, uh, especially in, in, in Baja. So all the, all the attention was going to the trucks, to the buggies, and to the gazillionaires. Uh, and, and so uh, I used to be a racer. Then I was a journalist, and I just – watched how bikes were just kind of treated as sideshow things. And, um, and so w everyone thought, oh, I, if I was in charge, if, if I was the owner of SCORE, I would do this and I would do that. And we just kind of grabbed the bull by the horns, made a few phone calls, teamed up with people like Eric Kudla from day one, also Poncho, my partner down south, and Fred Sobke from Baja Max. You know, um, there's a, like a handful, three or four people, five, six, seven people that were from the very, very start that are still 
uh, with us. But so the why is to answer, to solve the problem. I'm so bummed <clears throat> that, you know, you guys won't be with us uh, next week because um, we've really polished up our, uh, you know, our people skills and our, and the, the information flow right. Uh, right. with help from Eric. You know, we wouldn't be Kudla. You know, he should be on here instead of me. He's the uh, he's the brains and the and the glue. He's like gorilla snot, you know, glue <laughs> holding us together, as you know. So the how is basically naturally, and it's just been one step at a time, one relationship at a time, and it's very long lasting. And the why is just to solve the problem that bikes aren't getting the love that right they, that, that we think they need. Yeah, it, yeah and it, I had, I had was so new to rally, rally, like very, very, very new, in the sense that I had absolutely had no idea what idea was going on. on. Like I had to go to the RMS school. I had to. We had to do a lot of you know just research on our own. We had to get the bike ready, all that kinds of stuff. And I feel like if people now want to you know do a little bit more research, they can find out a little bit more about Rally. The good thing is is Dave Peckham over there at Rally oh. Management Services does a great job. If anybody's kind of interested by this talk, definitely go check them out. They're a great resource. Obviously, the Baja Rally is a great event to get into because it's it's a timekeeping enduro on steroids. It's it's what everybody loves about a timekeeping enduro, plus the fact that not only are you paying attention to the clock, like in the long run, sure, you know, you really you could get somewhere early, but most likely in a rally, you're, there's there's a small chance of that. But the whole other aspect of is the is the time thing is the fact that you're not following a trail, yeah, you're there's literally no arrows. following a road book, and there are times the fourth day last year where it was me on a Suzuki SP and I had a GPS in my hand because we lost the mount and we didn't have it for that bike. So I'm riding through and it's you're following a damn heading. Like it's it's awesome. It is timekeeping enduro on steroids. So that if when you understand that I have a lot of enthusiasm for this event and, and rally in general now, um, but it, and so we're not going back by any means because of any like we did, we loved last year. Now what he was kind of referring to in the sense of you know some of the organizational type stuff is we knew it's their second year they're learning as they go and that's well, okay because we've done things before. plus they had two hurricanes within right. three weeks like, of the event last year shit gets you know, crazy Scotty when you're trying to, to do with. this stuff so yeah. it's like yeah everybody's gonna learn from yeah that kind yes, of Steve. Stuff and yeah get crazy, yes, Steve. So. talk it talk about a real shit storm huh oh man <laughs> yeah. no Dude, we didn't yeah. know we didn't know what the yeah, Baja was going to look like. may not have even happened. I mean, obviously for us in the northern aspect, it was actually fine. But yeah, no, it could have been. It could have been a lot worse. Pff, like completely canceled. Well, well, let me tell you, I'm not sure if you guys really stay glued to the weather channel, but we've been sitting here on pins and needles oh, for no. the last four days. Is it happening oh, no. again? Oh, it's flooding just basically 100 miles south of where we'll be. There's massive flooding where, uh, 100 miles south of where we'll be. So we've been on eggs, you know, pins and needles, walking on eggshells and keeping, we have like meteorologists, um, mexianologists. Uh, if you will. Now, <laughs> uh, yeah. Witch doctors. We're, we're, we're keeping gluten. We're, it looks like we're out of the, um, out of the, uh, I almost said we're out of the closet, but. Uh, <laughs> There's bad uh, weather. Is and it's going to get weird when I talk to you in public. <laughs> We're out of the woods on this one. Is Coco's Corners? I hope that you guys will tune in from oh. your workstations uh, Tuesday morning, starting at six thirty. So we'll have uh, again robust tracking, uh, two spot trackers on every guy and girl, and um, we're for, we have seven countries represented. Uh, if you include Nishant, the photographer from India, but we can't really flex our muscles too much if eric was sitting with me right now he would or next to me he would probably prod me with a little stick you know we're, we're kind of humble in making uh growing this thing slowly over time you know we're not the baja 1000 and it takes time uh so we got six different cunt riders from six countries and our european push uh you know what we weren't able to accomplish all of our goals that we had this year to ship uh, a container of bikes and I'm so glad, man. I would imagine shipping a container full of uh, European guys' bikes and and the and the amount you know twenty different titles, moving them through literally three countries: Amsterdam, United States, and Mexico, and back would be like a logistical feat. So it's a blessing in disguise that we weren't able to bring the container from uh, Rotterdam. Like you guys, or, you guys still have even without that that ability. You guys do still have. I mean, some 
some bigger names in the sense of rally kind of come into the event to take part. And I mean, you got Cameron Steele back as well, which is going to be awesome. Oh. It actually pissed me off, not in a bad way, but like, oh, that son of a bitch. I was like, he wasn't there last year, and now that I've done the rip, I was like, oh, I need to, yeah. I need to, I need to rally with him. We with, kept because we kept bragging him. When you coming back to the yeah. rally? When you coming? Now, back? And now that we can't go, it's like son of a. <laughs> it's like damn it, Cameron. <laughs> Well, you know, for for there's probably not anyone else out there that's more serious about the rally right now than Cameron. Oh. He missed the win uh, of the inaugural rally by six seconds, yeah. and so uh, Grider had a penalty of thirty minutes that put Cameron six seconds off at the top of the podium. But so he's a big name that's coming. Uh, he's very serious about doing well. Uh, that will oh, this will only be his second uh, rally ever. We also are very stoked on Lyndon Poskett, uh, who has his big following uh, on um, races to places. We're honored that he's coming to visit us. He's bringing Yuji Shinohara from Japan, uh, and that is good. We have Lawrence Hacking. Uh, he is a Dakar veteran, uh, both on a bike, the first Canadian to finish the Dakar on a bike, and he... We've got Jeremy LeBreton, uh, who, if you've ever met Jeremy from Alt Rider, he is a hellman, a real stallion. And um, uh, you know, this guy just shows up at Enduro Cross, and he's able to get into it. I mean, he, Jeremy is a uh, he's kind of like me; he's a little nuts, but in a good way. And he, but he's coming. Um, we got about forty-two. So you you guys were twenty-four that started last year. No, we're forty-two. Uh, maybe a couple more maybe 45. We also have this device called Rally Comp that is coming out of El Paso, Texas. It is uh, basically the big news for this event is this device. It's a meter. It's it's like an ICO on growth hormone uh, infused steroids. Uh, this is like um, amazing technology that it's the identical technology that FIM and Dakar use, but just uh, condensed into the size of a GoPro. Uh, it's an invention, uh, probably patent pending. Every single rider that shows up will install this device. It's a small GoPro-sized device that is um, also works as an odometer, a compass repeater, uh, and a speedometer. But more importantly, it, it measures the race uh, with a GPS from start to finish, and it calculates your waypoints and your checkpoints and your speed panel speed zones all in real time so if you, as you cross the finish line you actually get a gross time and an adjusted net time right on your th this i'm sure is going to probably be the biggest splash that the that our event makes this year um, right. is rally comp and then uh, you know we hope you guys come back next year at six days Next year, we're going to be, uh, yeah, we can. And here's the thing, Brian, it's all a cart. So it, it's a six-day deal. Let's say you're one of those guys that can do six days. Awesome. You know, come on for six. Let's say you're like a regular person, just like you and me, that we really can't just break off um, for a whole week. Right. You can do all a cart. You could literally do one day. Yeah. Okay, I can only do the Wednesday. I can do the third day, and you can show up and race uh, for one single day or a pair of days, any sequence of days uh, that is sequential and, and um, stacked against each other, a la carte rally. So, uh, And that I think we can make that a reality. Kudla already gave us his, his thing on that that he does. Well, everybody, 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 everybody might not, might be, not be, whoops, whoops. may not be aware of the classes because I think you've adjusted your class structure this year, and added a few more things. So, uh, can you share with us what your class structure is going to look like this year, just so everybody will understand? You know, even if they're going to do it a la carte, what's available to them next year? Yeah, and and the fact that you guys, I think, have added you. Well, I know you have added UTVs. That, that's where so. I'm headed. Yeah, you know what? What's your class structure look like? And what should he buy to? Get a UTV. Okay. Well, first, it's not what you buy. It's what you sell. I would start with narcotic <laughs> stimulants. No, I was kidding. Just kidding. Um, no, the, uh, uh, we'd the, buy those, too. <laughs> sure. Supplements, just whatever you call it out there. But, um, yeah, I love you guys. But um, So we've got – it's always going to be pretty much 
Rally Pro and Rally One. We learned Rally One from our sister event, which is called Rally Playero, and that's the coast to coast rally. We'll be racing that in December from Veracruz back over yeah. to Oaxaca. It covers like like five states of Mexico, and it's four days long. That's our sister uh, rally, and together the Baja Rally and Coast to Coast comprise the Mexican National um, Cross Country Championship. But the um, uh, the classes are Rally Pro, so it's and that's the if you've ever won a championship at Score or you've been on a championship team or you've won a uh, uh, any first place in cl- uh, in class at Score, you're or best in the desert, you're automatically a pro. If you've ever finished a Dakar stage or an FIM uh, World Champ World Cross Country uh, stage, then you're a pro. So we have a classification that automatically puts you in pro, and then we just have amateur. That's beginners and graduates, uh, successful graduates of the Dave. Peckham Rally Management uh, <laughs> esteemed, uh, you know, undergraduate program, uh, which you guys, that's your old alma mater. So, um, so then we tried, we thought about ATV expert and it is so gnarly that there's nobody that even Jimmy Lewis, you know, as much as a masochist and sadist that he is, he uh, would not want to subject himself or any bike to what the Baja Rally could do. I would ask you, would you, Brian, want to ride a 990 or a F800 GS on what you did last year? absolutely not. I rode that, I rode that SP200 uh, for 300-something kilometers or 300-something miles on that last day. and yeah. But that was like the mentality was I'm going to have fun. I'm going to sit down all day. Like I'm just going to just go and do whatever it takes to go forward. So it's as long as it's, if you could do that for four days on a 990 and you could keep that mental state of remember you're having fun opposed to muscling and, a 500 pound motorcycle and be around, able to pick it up if you and be able to it. pick it up. Like that's a big thing. Like, but yeah, so I mean, so, so imagine you took the Suzuki and let's say you had to carry another Suzuki on your back. That's what basically that that's, it's that's too, exactly it, what it would be like. <laughs> this event is always going to be too gnarly for a 990 to race, and to, you could ride it, but you're not going to be able to race an 800 or a 990 and race those. And Jimmy told me, he said this: you, no matter what you do, you cannot turn that bike into a, a, an 800 or a 990 into a dirt bike. Now, Alex Martins probably would, would, you know, beg to differ, you know, but there's some big guys up in Washington. There's Radic uh, Burkat, you know, I hope he's not listening because I mean, he's the only, there's about five guys in America that I know of that, that could do it. I mean, you could ride the whole rally on a, this one's 800 miles, like 700 miles more or less. You could do it, but it's not something you would want to do to your machine. Well, I'll put it out there. If anybody who ever listens to this in the next year wants to challenge me and see if they could support me on a 990, I'll race all six days of the Baja Rally 4.0 on a 990. And I'll provide the bike. So, no, no. This is, somebody wants to see if I can do it. They're going to provide it all, and we're going to do it. They don't have to provide the bike. They just We'll put it out there. Jimmy Lewis wants to, Jimmy Lewis can do it. I know he can because he is a masochist. And but I'm crazy enough is, to find you know, fun in it. So <laughs> the 450 four stroke these days is just a oh, magic yeah. motorcycle. Yeah. I mean, I would, just, I would love to actually they can do be anything. on my 350. I really or, would. Right. Now that I've gotten used to the 350, I really drill the 350. I know that in the open stuff, it would not. It would be at you know, it wouldn't be advantageous. But that's okay. Like you know, it's so. But yeah, that 350 or a 450. Ah, oh, buddy. Right. The modern the modern four stroke is just magic and and if you had a class for for the adventure bikes or whatever, they wouldn't be competing against the four fifties. They'd be competing against each other. Yeah, they would so just it'd be, be a, a it'd be you know like bumper class. cars crash and burn. Who can pick the bike up the fastest and get to the end? You know, good they point. Good they, point, Steve. That's did, your wisdom. That's your wisdom showing. It's so, not your it's your years and wisdom, I guess. The, and the fact that he knows he wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I can't. Pick, I can't pick up my 990 anymore. Sorry. But what? What about UTV, Steve? Would see, you, see, th- this uh, is the thing. I call those things that range. What do you call them? Uh, I came uh, so close to 
the Shining Razors, up to right? Be a, Razors, yeah, but they there's something else for them. Side by side, they used to renegades, like they're Come hunting. On, Steven. You know, out in Texas, you guys go pig hunting with AK 47s and stuff, right? Out there, I like, go hunting uh, with my so cannon. What are they called? The Rangers, the like farmers use them, ranchers use them. Shotguns? I, no, no, no. Oh, but, he was side just like. <laughs> Renegade, what, uh, I forget what they call those things. But, um, Are you talking about the Yamaha? No, the new Yamaha is insane. That is that YZX? Steve? Oh, that, yeah, Steve, that, that's, that's, is, that, that, is that Baba Booey? Uh, Steven, Steven's, uh, Steven's a big side-by-side guy. Steven, here's about side-by-sides. We wish that we could recruit uh, more, but I know when the, we have three. We have uh, Joe Bolton and Mark Vanscourt uh, from Corona, uh, Bob Jones from Canada. And also Patrick Witt from your guys' old stomping grounds out yeah. in Texas. He there. actually Patrick. he tried to get me to navigate for him. I was bad to navigate for I him, was, too. What? That yeah. close no? to saying yes. Said no? We just knew it was not in the car. Well, I knew it wasn't in the cards for time away from work, period. Like, and I knew regardless I was, of cost, I knew it, was, it yeah. wasn't in the cards for work. And then, just getting back from yeah, so, Colorado. Yeah. Talk about time away from work. Like If you take that time, then you're yeah. going to have... Plenty of time. Patrick would be paying me a lot of money to be his navigator, and it would be a year salary. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> I would have been cheap, but I just can't do it. I yeah. really I, wanted to, though. I know. It'd be fun. So the UTVs, though, kind of tell us like that, that growth. Why that growth in the UTVs? I think it's awesome. I got no negativity towards it. I just kind of like, why, what's the thinking for Baja Rally? And then kind of how, how it works in, in regards to, obviously, at this point, they have a driver and a navigator, I think, so... Okay, fans at home, uh, just get up a different, open up a new browser, fans at home, and just type in the Google search, UTV Revolution in Old Mexico. UTV Rally Revolution. Just Google UTV Rally Revolution. Uh, Patrick Reyes and Romina Adiago and uh, Hernan Santamiago, these guys are f- from Rally Player. Oh, they have about 25 UTVs showing up at their rallies down in Oaxaca and Veracruz. It is a big deal. Down in uh, and Jalisco, they ride to Puerto Vallarta. They have a, a ride with about 2,000 bikes and UTVs. Uh, down in, Me- in Mexico, the UTV thing is, it makes our thing look uh, pretty okay. Um, once the first big UTV guys come to Baja Rally, they're all going to come in, in waves. It's kind of like the big boys need to come out and show them that, hey, look at us, do a video. You know, we had a guy, we had a couple guys that were very close to signing uh, with us uh, to ride their, to bring their teams down, their, their top racer teams. So we're a year away. But once the first UTV start racing in Baja, it will take over and it will explode. Yeah, uh, I'm 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 super excited about this. Like, I would I would love the opportunity not just to be able to do like say look Stephen and I like Stephen and I like we do this show together. We love all the same off road kind of stuff about what goes on in these sports. But the thing is, it's like my sport is dirt bike racing per se, and his sport is kind of the the four by off road, you know, the side by side stuff. Like he would ride a dirt bike, but he does you know that's not his thing. Like, and he doesn't get the same joy out of it that I do. But like. I would love to be his navigator in a side by side. You know what I mean? Like in that situation, like because I like to rally, I like that mm-hmm. mental thing that comes along with it. You know, and if he wants to drive the side by side and let me navigate, like I think that would be a great way for for him and I to go do that, or like Dad and I, where he gets to drive and be the crazy nutsack holding the wheel, and I get to still navigate, or maybe I get to be the crazy guy. I don't know, but I think UTVs would be bitching in this yeah. circumstance. Absolutely, and the safety factor of it all, and the it's not so wild and crazy. But let me sidebar for a minute. You know, you and your dad being able to spend time together and travel to something like Baja. I mean, you know, this is uh, Cameron Steele would tell you, like a, a dozen guys would tell you, Eric, all the other crew. When you spend time with your father, my dad's my best friend, and I took him down in, in 2007, and he uh, pitted for me you know, Baja 250, Baja 500, it, and just spending time with your old man, you guys are awesome. And I see the two of you guys sitting next to each other doing the show together, and man, uh, you know, a lot of guys don't have the opportunity to, to be best friends with their old man, and heck, with you two, I mean, shit, the apple don't fall far from the tree, <laughs> what up, Colin? Yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty nuts. But yeah, I think that's what's neat about these situations is, is 
with Rally and kind of it, you you need such an interesting, different kind of support crew. And I think within that, you get a chance to spend so much more time with your support crew. But you know what? So I think the talk wimps. about trust. Talk about trust too. Yeah. And like that. We, so we interviewed yeah. Robbie Gordon, um, yeah. all of the Volkswagen team. I went to Dakar to the Dakar Rally in 2011 and did 7,000 miles uh, in a Volkswagen support vehicle. At, you know, every single day, every single bivouac, and I was with the, all of the drivers of Volkswagen. And I, all I went to, Brian, was the navigators, and I talked to the co-drivers. They got no glory. They did all the work, and the drivers really have to trust them. And let me tell you, they have intercoms on in the headphones. I've been a co-driver in about 12 or 13 um, pro truck races. I'm the co-driver, and there's fighting and arguing every single time and you're but you have to trust the guys so you're like, hey what was that all about and like there's hey i told you left you went right and like there's a lot of bickering and, and stuff but um the co-drivers and and the trust that you have to have steve and, and brian when you're when you're out there and and you know talk about the the cultures that go on in the bivouac i mean we saw magic last year at coco's corner and i saw steve had his coco shirt on just the magic that happened. We broke a record with over a hundred people sleeping in that in that little corner, and you guys having your, all you know, your uh, break, your broken motor, your extraction, and then working with Alex and conflict and putting a whole bike back together, and you know, getting and just and just shooting the shit and watching the drama unfold. So that was a story that just morphed out of nothing last year. It's a human experience. It's the dra- the culture and the drama that just emerges out of the dust, as you say. And uh, this year, we're likely to see something just the, un- the unseen story is going to just develop from out, out of nowhere. And uh, hopefully it's a positive story with a good ending that someone will come up and uh, do a, a brotherly fraternal gesture and help somebody, you know, someone's going to make a sacrifice and give someone a bike or a motor and, or work all night and uh, do, show the camaraderie of, uh, you know, the off-road brotherhood. And uh, that's, as you know, Brian, I think that's what you're also el- alluding to. That's kind of what rally is all about. Yeah. We've had a lot of fun doing that. That's what's been awesome about it is that we really have grown in our, in our relationship as writers, going in our relationship as father and son, as friends and all that kind of stuff, and I think everybody could get that too. So it's pretty pretty wicked. So so as we kind of wrap it up, Scott, tell us. I wanted to know so best ways for us to keep up with the rally this year. So so people out there are interested, they want to watch, they want to kind of keep up with writers. So what's the best way to do that? And then uh, kind of. You know, who, who's the dark horse this year for the win? And if it's Scott Bright to get a second in a row, that's fine. You know, that's not really a dark horse, obviously, since he's done it before. But, like, you know, if there is one, let us know who you think that would be. Okay. I haven't even, that hasn't even crossed my mind. Nino Rojas, uh, the Mexican, uh, would be somebody that I would uh, put, uh, like, a win, place, and show on. Um, you know, podium like favorites, you know, Cameron, Quinn, Cody, Scott Bright, um, there is, uh, but, um, but but Scott Bright and and Ian Glenn is, they they have a lot to lose at Baja Rally and because they're heading into the Dakar, um, you know, this should be more of kind of like a training mode for them. If I'm Scott Bright, I don't go for the jugular on, on the until the fourth day I, I i don't even go to 80 percent if i'm scott bright i don't even ride at 80 percent until day four i'd be riding 60 70 percent um and because they have a lot to lose if they just have one fall down and, and if they scott bright basically tweaks a wrist really bad three months out from the dakar that's like uh, it's really bad i mean and same with the end so if I'm those guys, I just kind of take it as a, a training mission. So Cameron's kind of out for the jugular, I think. And um, as I run down the list, I wouldn't uh, put Lyndon uh, Poskett, you know, out of it. Baja experience is really going to pay off, though. So, uh, you know, Quinn is pretty much your favorite guy. Dark Horse, um, you know, Charles Jursa is coming up as he's the head and off-road mechanic at Husky North America. And he is a guy that I would um, kind of watch out for, uh, so in the amateurs, um, 
Uh, that's a kind of a tough one. Yeah. So tough. did uh, did Charles Jursa move up to the pro class after winning the amateurs last year? Oh yeah, he's just like you can't. You're like irrevocably like we're yeah. just you can't go back. And, and we have, we check we, we we saw some guys sandbagging yesterday. Kudla was like, oh, this guy and that guy had to. Tell Eric, no, this guy's getting bumped up. And <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. All right. So what's the best way to keep up with the uh, rally? Okay. Super important. Spot Tracker and Global Star, uh, PCI Radios and Sat Moto. Also, Explore Baja, Tim Sanchez and our whole crew. We have a communications network live tracking at Baja Rally. Just BajaRallyMoto.com. Um, if you want to watch this rally, you can watch every day unfold with a map. We put the map up 15 minutes before the riders leave. So guys like Steve can't get on their iPhones and, and UTVs like they're, they can kind of have a little iPhone. If we catch them, we're going to, you know, we're going to, you know, take them out and bat them around the corner. But, um, you can watch the live tracking on our website and it is sick. I mean, you guys were out in the desert last year, but your fans yeah. were watching uh, every day with a, a sat map and it's, it's very robust updating every two to five minutes. So that's at Baja rally moto.com Baja rally moto.com. And if you Google Baja rally, uh, our search engine optimization is dialed in. So you have <laughs> a, uh, no, yeah, we, we did our homework on that, but, um, so, and now, thanks to our sponsors that we have, BMW, Motorcycles, Escondido. Uh, this is like the funny thing. And you guys, like, I want to thank Rockstar Energy, Carl Jr. and Geico. No, so it's, it's BMW, Motorcycles, Escondido, uh, Rally Comp, Knight Rider, uh, ADV Moto, Giant Loop. Um, the people that have really thrown in, PCI Radio, Spot Tracker, Sat Moto. We, we, we'd be nowhere without Baja Mex Insurance and all the other guys and you know we're just i can hardly wait dude but hey check it out I'm, i've got my sanity together enough that i could actually toast a little bit of wine with you and nice. i know that's what you guys do are you guys on the wagon or something i can't oh no i i uh, I've, fa I've fallen off i i, I, had I, a, I just drove all day so. yeah he just drove all day so <laughs> and all day for yeah yeah uh so no i uh, my wife and i luckily she had gone out and gotten some wine that's two weeks in a row now i've had wine for this show so hey, you're, uh, you're mellowing with age, Ryan. You're mellowing. No, with I'm age. just lazy and just don't drive to the beer store and drink whatever's here. <laughs> hey, come on, come on back to Baja because the wines down here are just nuts, dude. It's just awesome. Sure, and, um, I really beer. hope that you guys, um, you know, will put in time. Uh, we're going to be looking at the first uh, couple of weeks of October, so the you know mid like you know fifth or sixth of October. Eric is the boss of all this stuff, but um, start putting your time requests in and or plan your early retirements for next October. All right. Yeah, you know, come down and try to do this thing. And uh, God, we can hardly wait. I feel like you guys are coming back. I'm going to meditate on that. If Bye. I retire at 37, which would be next year, I'm in. That would be epic. I don't know how we can make it happen, but I'm sure if I sell my sperm. Oh, nope. Those don't work anymore. Oh, oh well. One day. Scotty. Thank, thank you very you. much for coming thank back you on for the what show. You do. Really yes. appreciate it. Yeah, the 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 event's awesome. Definitely, everybody check it out next week. Uh, they get started uh, on Tuesday. Monday is all their check-in days and four days of racing. We'll definitely be keeping everybody up to date at seattime.co and of course on Facebook and all that fun stuff. So, and one more time, how can people watch your event? BajaRallyMoto.com and Google just Google Baja Rally. The first thing that will come uh, up is our tracking Moto. page. Yeah. There it is. Thanks, dude. We really appreciate it. We'll definitely be chatting soon. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Woo! Yeah, I'm, I'm upset that we don't get to go back. We really did have a lot of fun last year, and I think it's one of those deals where we went in so blind. Well, we'd never done it before, right. but at, no, least it, we had, fine. at least we had the school, so yeah. we knew what to expect. You know, you went through it with uh, Scotty and Ian, um, and, and, you know, we knew what to expect from the school, and plus we'd done a lot of homework, so we just didn't know Mexico. That was the biggest Shock to me, you know, getting stopped by the army. Oh yeah, uh, going into Mexico, but then we just got getting right into through. Mexico was easy. But then four or five times you're getting stopped by the army, and and it you know the country has its challenges, and you just you know you just give them a six pack of or let them take your vodka or let them take your vodka, and and you just <laughs> drive on, keep it on, yeah. But you know, he mentioned Queen Cody, uh -huh. who's coming, yeah. Remember how years ago we rode with uh, Malcolm and you said, oh, I could keep Malcolm's dust in sight? Yep. 
Well, Quinn was on a 990, and I rode with him on Saturday. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't keep his dust in sight. You couldn't keep his dust in sight? He was. And then when we got a guy that was hurt, he kept riding up and down the hills double. Oh, to get the person? To get this guy out of the woods. I mean, we were deep, deep, deep in the... In, in the mountains when a uh, guy rebroke his collarbone um, that had been broken eight weeks ago. His doctor told him, it's okay to ride, just don't crash. <laughs> oh, well. There's, but there's always that. Quinn Cody can ride. Well, he was on the 1190, though. But same difference. He, he can ride that thing. And yeah. there's, there's, I rode with uh, Russell Babbitt on, Russell Bobbitt, on, yeah. Bobbitt on Friday. And uh, he can. Oh, yeah. I could keep his dust inside. Oh, yeah. But Quinn Cody ain't no way. That long, lanky frame well, is I mean, on that big bike. I definitely, just, you know, just like when I was keeping Malcolm Dust in sight, pretty sure he was riding at like not 100%. So it's unfortunate that we would say, man, we were keeping our dust in sight and they were probably like riding like well, 70%. And then remember when we had to pull him out of the creek? Yes, that was epic though. Yeah. That was epic. So, for those of you guys who don't know, this has been Seat Time, episode 181. We've got a lot of fun things going on in the works. We're trying to kind of venture out a little bit more. It's more than just a show. So, you know, we were talking about the Baja Rally. We raced the Baja Rally last year, so Woody navigates the Baja Rally. As he was saying, Google this. Go Google Woody navigates the Baja Rally, and you'll see our document that we did, our documentary that we did last year. 15 minutes. I mean, it's it's covers a lot of stuff, literally from us going to rally school and then doing all the bike prep and then going to the event all four days that was out there, prepping the SP and then finishing 300 some odd days on a 1986 SP200 uh, dual sport bike. Was it yeah. even considered a dual sport? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was a, well, that was called an enduro bike band. His comment as he's leaving um, Mama Rosario's for the last time, they had done an early loop on that fourth day and people were actually, I saw them, exchanging money when he showed up. People were betting on whether he'd show up after the morning loop on the 200. I don't think they bet on the afternoon loop. But as he's getting ready to leave, he goes, he's looking around at the bike, and he goes, Dad, I think I'm forgetting something. I'm leaving something. And my comment back to him was, yeah, about 250 cc's. Um, <laughs> and, yep. yeah, that was about right. But he kept it pinned, and um, it's still running. <laughs> Strangely enough, I think the rally equipment came off of it only like four right. months ago. <laughs> right. Well, and then, yeah. you know, Alex Martin borrowed it for a while, and and uh, I think he has his own now, and so wish him luck. Yep, I know, man. Everybody's going to have a good time. So, obviously, congratulations to Ryan Slice for doing so good, and, oh. then, you know, everybody getting on here. Glad you had so much fun at the KTM Adventure Rally. And we survived. Yeah. <laughs> Mom probably is not going to say the same thing but uh so coming up we've got the black knoll Na uh, national enduro this coming up weekend so ryan Sipe said he's going to be there so it'd be cool uh, we just saw caleb russell wrap up his xc1 championship at the gncc at unadilla this past weekend he does have a chance to wrap up the national enduro but being that i well we know he's injured his knee is probably not in the best of shape and so there's i mean it would be tough for him to do that i think but he's got to you know, do so well so he can carry those points on to the next round and then try to, to wrap everything up there. Obviously, if it doesn't happen this coming weekend, um, we're going to have the Baja Rally and we've got National Hare and Hounds and work coming up. We've got Enduro Cross, we've got in the Sacramento and then Denver, uh, all kinds of fun stuff going on. So it'll be good. Remember, if you want to win some koozies, do some reviews, either iTunes or YouTube or somewhere where we can check the comments. Have fun with it. That's what we want to see. Of course, selfie.com, you can go check that out. The link is in the sidebar. This has been Seat Time. SeatTime.co is the website where you can check out all of our information. Of course, we archive all the sites. We are on um, iTunes and Spotify if you're just looking for audio only, if you don't think we're sexy enough for you. Facebook, facebook.com slash Seat Time. We're on there. Like us. Like us real hard. And then, of course, Twitter. It's at Seat Time underscore CO. And on Instagram, it's at Seat Time. Very simple. We know. We tried to make it easy. And then shout out to all you guys in Colorado that watch Seat Time. Hey, yeah, we'll, appreciate that. We'll have that. some more. We'll have some more video available through the, the Seat Time website of the uh, of the interviews and some of the writing from from the Adventure Rally. So yeah, I posted those out there. as you were sending them over. Yeah, but you don't have all my GoPro stuff. You know. Oh, we got more. Oh, I like it. I like it. And we can put a little edit together then. Yeah, got some interviews and everything. Yeah, that was the idea, wasn't it? I mm -hmm. like it. I'm glad somebody in this room is thinking. So definitely, thank you very much for paying attention. We'll be live again next weekend. We do know that Stephen's baby is coming. Stephen's wife's baby. I mean, he helped make it. I mean, you know, as at this point in time. Not this Stephen. Yeah. Uh, he still helped make the baby. So 
That's going to happen. So, I mean, not to say that shit not will get a little weird in the next cup and Tuesdays. But we're still going to do the show. But it's either going to be Cooper Bailey running it or it's going to be my wife. So, we might keep them a little bit shorter and not have as many guests. But then you'll have Jordan bit. Bailey sitting here. Right. So, I mean, that'll make it better. Yeah, well, that's much yeah. better. As long as long, we'll just keep, make sure Cooper keeps the camera faced on us. And by us, I mean her. Uh, yeah, we'll be sold. Be and good, good yeah. luck, Scotty, on the way down to Coco's Corner. Yeah, I know. It'll be fun. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. It's been Seat Time. Remember, always enjoy a pint full of awesome. We'll see you next Tuesday. Peace.